Next month, America marks the turning point of World War II when we commemorate the 80th anniversary of the D-Day invasion. And some of those German soldiers captured ended up right here, a little known part of our hidden history. The stillness of rural Virginia only adds to the scenery that is life on the eastern shore. But this land now covered in rapeseed hides ghosts from the world battlefields of the 20th century. What was your reaction when you found out that this was once a prisoner of war camp in World War II? Excitement, interested, kind of a little befuddled by it all. Mike Holvick moved to the town of Oyster two and a half years ago to a house built on what was once Camp Ediger. It held German POWs brought to Virginia beginning in the summer of 1944. Having that kind of history related to that place where you live is quite remarkable. Camp Ediger was one of 23 World War II prison camps in Virginia, housing 17,000 POWs, many of them in Hampton Roads. They decided to bring them to the United States and our case, Virginia Beach and the surrounding Hampton Roads area, and used them as a labor force. That's because American men were fighting overseas. The German POWs then became a local curiosity. People would take their Sunday trips to, we call it Route 600 now, or just 600, it's one of our back roads, and we'd go and, I guess for lack of a better term, and gawk at the prisoners that were inside the fence. And at least two went outside the fence. A 1944 edition of the Eastern Shore News tells of two POWs who escaped Camp Ediger. The article says they were recognized by the wife of a wounded American soldier and captured two days later. The Northampton County Sheriff says they offered no resistance and were perfectly submissive. I never saw any of them try to get away, you know, and I never heard of any of them trying to get away. As a 10-year-old boy growing up in Pungo, Joe Burroughs remembers prisoners picking corn on the family farm six hours a day, four days a week. They were paid $2.50 a day, half of what Americans earned. They'd have them in the back of the truck, covered truck, and they'd have two vet, two guards, had rifles, automatic guns. The prisoners were housed just off the road they helped build. Virginia Beach Boulevard on the site of Willis Furniture and Mattress. Only then, it was the largest German prisoner of war camp in Southampton Roads. 6,000 POWs stayed at Camp Ashby from 1944 through the end of the war. Many of them fought in North Africa under the man known as the Desert Fox, Field Marshal Erwin Rommel. Others were captured during the D-Day invasion. They pretty much had every modern convenience that you could imagine. It was a very structured camp. The prisoners got up, they went to work. Unconditional surrender. And following an Allied victory, the POWs were repatriated back to Germany. Many left Virginia with a new impression of American life. Not what they had heard, not what they had been taught about us, but what it really was individual freedom, and it makes me proud to be an American. And that story shot and edited by photojournalist Chris Wynn. In Newport News, Fort Eustis hosted a re-education center for German POWs with a six-day course in American democracy. And even though Virginia during World War II endured the pain of segregation and Jim Crow, Julie Spivey says German POWs also took with them an ideal of what America could be and a vision vastly different from that of Nazi Germany. 